In this video, we will do a quick virtual visit to a parabolic trough solar thermal power plant. A solar thermal power plant of a parabolic trough technology is a power plant that generates electricity using the solar radiation to produce this electrical energy. Between the radiation and the electricity, there is a, another transformation, a, a intermediate transformation in a thermal energy. Then the radiation first at all is transformed in thermal energy and after this thermal energy is transformed first in a potential energy after in mechanical uh, energy, rotational uh, energy, and after in electrical energy in our generator. But which are the main elements of a parabolic trough power plant? The plant is divided in two sections. The biggest one is the solar field, and the second one, the smaller one, is the um, power block. In the solar field, we will capture it the radiation and we will convert the uh, radiation in thermal energy, incre increasing the temperature in a fluid, in a thermal fluid that uh, goes through the uh, solar field and increase uh, his temperature. A solar thermal uh, power plant needs uh, around four hectares per megawatt installed. That means that for a solar thermal power plant, a parabolic trough technology that produce, for example, a 50 megawatt, we need 200 hectares. And for a thermal power plant that uh, generate 100 uh, megawatt, we need uh, around 400 hectares of land. Uh, this space and this characteristic are for a thermal a solar thermal power plant with thermal storage. Talking about the solar field, uh, the, the unit of the solar field is the module. The module normally has 12 meter by uh, 6 meter, more or less. The, the space is around 70 square meters. Uh, for a module, uh, one module increase the temperature of the fluid one degree, less than one degree. Then we need uh, a lot of uh, modules that compose every loop. The modules are grouped in solar field uh, assembly, SCA. Uh, this solar field assembly are, are assembly uh, of modules that moves together. Normally are eight or twelve of this module move together with the help of a hydraulic or electric unit. Four or uh, six of this SCA are connected together in a line and uh, compose uh, one loop. The normal configuration is uh, composed by four SCA of 12 units. Uh, four multiplied by 12 is 48 module composed one loop. The name of loop is uh, because the, um, the site where the fluid goes in is the same site that the fluid goes out. Do something like this. Goes in and goes out by the same uh, the same site, not the same point, the same site. The uh, one collector, a uh, big collector, fit every loop and is connected to the inlet of the loop. And another uh, collector, the hot collector, connect in parallel the uh, different loops that compose the uh, solar field. Then remember this concept, a solar collector element is one module, the solar collector assembly are the, uh, the assembly of modules that moves together and a loop is an uh, assembly 
of solar collector assembly, normally composed by four of ten, and uh, composed the, the unit that increase the temperature in a solar thermal power plant of parabolic draft technology. See, in the module, we can recognize uh, at least uh, three important elements. The first one is the structure, the second one are the reflector, and the third one is the tubes, the absorber tube, uh, and uh, inside of this absorber tube, circulate the fluid that increases the temperature. In the inlet of the loop, the normal temperature is around 300 degrees, and in the outlet, the uh, normal temperature is around 400 degrees. And the fluid that circulates uh, uh, inside of the pipes of the loop is normally uh, oil, thermal oil. It's uh, uh, organic uh, synthetic fluid that increases the temperature. It uh, does not change the phase, it's liquid, it goes in liquid and goes out liquid. Uh, does not change the, the, the phase, only change the temperature and uh, the, the energy captured correspond to the uh, increase of the temperature. The fluid that circulates inside is around 6 kilos per second. This is the, the, the flow. And uh, it is important uh, in one of this type of uh, power plant that the uh, flow was turbulent. There is a turbulence in order to mix the heat oil that circulate by the wall of the tube with the cold oil that circulate by the center of the tube. All the different uh, loops uh, goes to the uh, different hot collectors and this uh, uh, main collector goes finally to the uh, power block. In the power block we recognize different sections. The first section is the, uh, the heat uh, thermal fluid, HTF, uh, area. Second area is the uh, thermal storage area. Next one is the water steam cycle. Next one is the uh, turbine and generator. Next one, the substation. And the last one is the BOP, the balance of plant, the rest of the equipment that compose the auxiliary systems. Starting with the HTF, we can uh, recognize uh, the pumps, the main pumps that allow the circulation of the oil in a, uh, both in the uh, solar field and in the uh, power block. Big and expensive uh, pumps are responsible of this movement of the thermal oil. The circuit of uh, thermal oil needs expansion tank because the, uh, the, the density of the oil changes a lot uh, between the starting moment when the oil is uh, cold and in the nominal condition when the oil is hot, the density changes, uh, decrease, and that means that the volume uh, that uh, occupy the, the, the HTF is bigger. For that reason, we need an uh, expansion tank. Uh, the, uh, of course, the size of this expansion tank are according with the volume of fluid, but you can consider uh, uh, for a, a thermal power plant of 50 megawatts uh, around uh, 1,000 cubic meters double for a plant with 100 uh, megawatts. Next element that normally we found in a, a solar thermal power plant of parabolic trough technology are the boilers, auxiliary boilers to increase the temperature in case of the uh, temperature of the oil was very cold. And uh, remember that this oil has a property and um, it is possible to freeze the oil in order to avoid to freeze the oil, we have some boilers, and these boilers are responsible for the increase of the uh, temperature, only if the oil is cold. Next section that we have in the power block is the steam generation train, SGT. 
the steam generation train is responsible to change the temperature between the oil and the water. The water steam cycle uh, needs some temperature and the uh, hot HTF is uh, supply this energy that needs the, the water steam cycle. But uh, we need some place to exchange this energy and this place is the, the exchanger, the exchanger that compose the steam generation train. Normally uh, we have four of them. Uh, we need a economizer, evaporator, superheater, reheater and this is um, because every one of these equipment is specialized doing something. Is that the economizer is responsible for the increase of the temperature of the water, the liquid water. The evaporator is responsible for change the phase between the, the water and the steam. The superheater is responsible to increase the temperature of the uh, steam at the exit of the evaporator. And finally, the reheater is responsible to increase the temperature of the uh, steam once the steam has been decompressed in the uh, first steam turbine, the high pressure steam turbine. The oil goes in one direction, the water goes, goes in the another direction. The uh, HTF goes from the superheater to the economizer and the water goes from the economizer to the superheater. Next system that we need is the water steam cycle. The water steam cycle is composed by two sections, the water section and the steam section. Connect this water steam cycle, connect the steam turbine with the steam generation train. Uh, in the water section, we have two subsections. The first one is the, um, uh, the condensate section and manage the water condensated in the uh, condenser uh, and conduct this, um, uh, this water till the, uh, the, the water, uh, feed water tank. And uh, this uh, circuit, this uh, small circuit, is uh, called condensate circuit. And we have uh, another circuit for the water to increase the pressure a lot with the help of the uh, feed water pumps, very expensive, very big and expensive pumps, and um, uh, these are responsible to increase the pressure of the water and introduce this water under pressure in the steam generation train. The steam section is um, uh, composed by pipes, of course, connect the superheater uh, and reheater with the uh, with the turbine with the high pressure turbine and low pressure turbine and uh, the main element that we found there in the circuit is the bypass valves. The bypass valve bypass the, the steam uh, between the inlet and the outlet of each one of the turbines in case of uh, a start or in case of stops or in case of some trip uh, in the plant. Next element that we have is the steam turbine. The steam turbine is composed by two turbines and one generator. The steam turbines are the high pressure steam turbine that uh, the inlet of this turbine is the, the, the connection with the uh, superheater. And uh, once the steam uh, start to uh, appear drops of water that can erosionate the blades of the turbine uh, goes out of this turbine and goes in to the reheater, increase the temperature and uh, trying to, to maintain far away of the condensate condition to the steam. And after the, the outlet of the um, reheater goes to the low pressure turbine. In the low pressure turbine, we uh, generate more or less 60-70% uh, of the energy is generated in the uh, low pressure steam turbine and uh, there the, the inlet, remember, is the reheater and the outlet is the condenser. The steam turbine normally is uh, located in a building. 
in the steam building and our next element is the electric system the high voltage electric system is the uh, substation this substation connect with the electrical net of the country or the area where the, the uh, energy is supplied and the, the main element uh, probably is the transformer is because the a generator generate the electricity at uh, some level but the net normally is uh, uh, has another voltage higher uh, voltage then it, it is necessary to uh, synchronize uh, to um, uh, to reach the same level of voltage between the electricity generated in the power plant and the net For that reason we need transformer and other element switches, uh, measure, protection, etc. Uh, to connect the power plant with the net. Finally, we need uh, another system. These systems are the auxiliary system. Uh, this auxiliary system are the cooling system. Uh, we have a plant with cooling tower or with aero condenser. But uh, in this tower is an important part of the plant because we need to throw out the energy that we are not able to transform in electrical energy. Second system is the uh, closed cooling system. is to cool down the different equipment that has uh, that we have in the um, in the power plant, like generator or pumps or compressor, etc. Next system is the water treatment plant. The water treatment plant try to uh, to produce the water that we need for the water steam cycle and the water that, that we need for other uses. Then the water treatment plant uh, clean the water and produce demi water for the uh, water steam cycle. The wastewater system recover all the different sources of uh, waste water and uh, depurate in some cases but normally the mix uh, control and throw out the this the, the point where we throw out the water to the ambient other systems that are part of the uh, BOP the balance of plant the, the auxiliary system are the compressed air plant uh, or the um, firefighting system. We have seen in this video a virtual visit very quick. The different uh, we have tried to, to show the different elements that compose one PT plant.